Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is part two. If you haven't seen part one, I'll link that down below. That was the house and the patio pour. But in this one, you're going to get to see us pour the garage, do some power troweling, some finishing, and the saw cutting. And on this job, we started here about 6.30 in the morning with the pump. We had some trouble getting the pump unplugged. He clogged up, and that was a big problem. I didn't think we was going to get it unplugged. We finally did. And it's now about 8.30 in the morning and we're getting the garage poured. What we like is when we pour big jobs like this is to get the whole job poured before we have to start sending somebody back to finish. So luckily, luckily that happened today. Now I don't get involved with the spec or the, the design on a lot of these jobs. I'm just hired as a sub to come in and pour and finish the concrete. So this is the way the garage was specced. It was just four inches of concrete with fiber mesh, 3,500 PSI, with air entrainment, no poly, no wire, no rebar, no nothing. It was just the way it was specced, so that's why you see us pouring it like this. Here we go. You? Got the dizzies going on. How about you? What's that mean when you get dizzy when you stand up? Get old. It means you're ready for a stroke. <laughs> I'm ready for something. It means you need to go on vacation again. You gotta be careful mentioning stroke around him. Him? Yeah. Yeah. You mean stroke like pass out or stroke like... Yeah, you know. Oh, okay, that's stroke. I'm going to pull ahead and I'm going to back right over there just a little bit so you gentlemen can do your stuff. That middle one's going to come out. Yeah, both of them. More, more. Yeah, take it right out. Oh, now in just a little. Oh, good. Shovel. It's all kinds in the driveway up there. There's about a yard. There's about a yard in there. Did you do that? I did not do that. No. That was your protege. That would be uh, smoking. You, you taught him everything you know. Uh, Alright, so we had plenty of concrete, which is always a bonus. <laughs> it's always a plus on a big job like this. What you definitely don't want to do is run out of concrete. Um, 
especially if like we don't do the subgrades that's all subbed out to an excavation contractor and a lot of times a lot of times they're just not really that great to be honest with you they're up and down like in the basement like that it can be up and down an inch so to try to get an average you know you take the laser you shoot a bunch of spots you try to come up with an average and order plenty of concrete because if you run out you know you're 30 40 minutes away from the concrete plant on a day like today and by the time you order the balance and the balance gets back the concrete's already starting to set up and you're already starting a power trial and that just that just makes for a tough day you know if some, when someone's going to stop the power trial go back and finish pouring that little piece that you ran out with so when we do jobs like this you know we you know we always show up in advance whether it's a day ahead of time a week ahead of time shoot our grades and try to come up with an average of how thick the concrete is and then make sure we order plenty of concrete even if we send back a yard or two it's much much better than running out on a job like this waiting for a balance it's just going to mess everybody up um, we don't want to do that so we're noticing that the garage concrete feels a little bit funny compared to the house concrete we're not sure why at this point but um, we'll get to that in a minute Just don't feel good. They don't have slips anymore, so you can't look on the slip and see if it's got air or not. Probably didn't put air in it. They don't give it tickets anymore? No, they have these iPad things. If you want it, they'll email it. Yeah. Yeah, that don't feel good. You see how it's tearing up there when you're boat boating it? It's got that sticky, crappy, yucky, soft surface drying feeling to it. Whereas none of that did. Yeah. That's everything. There you are. So what we determined was the problem with this concrete up here in the garage was though it was a little windy up here you can see the trees blowing a little bit so when you have a little bit of wind blowing over the surface and then you have a sunny really dry conditions it kind of kind of dries out the surface faster than the bottom part of the concrete so it, it kind of crusts it over we call it crusted over it kind of like, you can think of like jello you know the top of the jello is feels kind of dry but it's still really really soft underneath while well, this is kind of what the concrete's like and when it when it starts curing up like this it just it just makes it difficult to work with so that's kind of what we're dealing with on this as we're finishing it you know and we had to break it open we call this floating right here we had to break it open kind of early to make sure that you know we get it all smoothed out pretty good with the power trial I'm actually using one of our smaller trials, our 30 inch trials on this garage because the garage is pretty small. The boys, Darren and Luke, are going to be using the bigger ones, 36 inches down there in the basement you'll see in a minute. But I'm just getting this broke open so we can get the, you know, the surface kind of, kind of leveled out, smoothed up a little bit with the float blades and then I'm going to actually hit it again with the float blades. And then I got finish blades on underneath those float blades but right now, I'm just hitting the doorway right now trying to smooth that out but as I'm smoothing it out you know I'm feeling it and it just doesn't feel good if you've ever finished concrete you know what I mean when it's drying out on the surface like this now down in the basement you know it was kind of kind of blocked by the wind a little bit so the boys didn't have any issues down there finishing that that thing that thing went really really fast it's probably about 10 30. 11 o'clock in the morning right now you know and we got done pouring that basement around 8 8 30 so they're 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 probably three quarters to almost done that right now i know we get out of here everything you know power trial and all sawed you'll see sawing in a minute but probably around noon time i think we get out of here on everything 
Um, but the garage, it was a little, just a little bit of a struggle to finish at first. You know, once you once you get it hit a couple times, it's not as bad. You just got to keep up with it. You can't wait. You can't let it get too hard because then the surface gets really hard just to smooth out. Even the blades on the power trowel don't want to smooth it out unless you throw water on the surface. And you really don't want to throw any water on the surface because that kind of weakens the surface. So once I got done troweling out my edges, I got right back on it with the float blades. And which was probably maybe 10 minutes. And I'm going right back over it again. And it's it's cured up a little bit. You know, it's, it's getting a little bit smoother as I'm going here even with the float blades on it and you can see I'm changing direction with my pattern to kind of level it out smooth it out and then as soon as I get done here you know I'm gonna I'm gonna kick those float blades off and then I'll I'll get right back on it with the finish blades because if I let it sit like this this is still fairly rough as far as the boat the blades are concerned if I let it sit in the Sun like this in the wind for any amount of time it's gonna be really difficult for me to to close it up with these finish blades without throwing some type of water. Now, the best thing to do would be to have some day one finishing aid here with us in a little spray can, but we just didn't have any today. And the day one finishing aid is to help slow the it's help slow the evaporation of the moisture out of the surface a little a little bit better. So it actually helps make finishing a little bit easier. If we'd had some of that when we bolt floated, we could have sprayed it on, bolt floated it in. And then we could use it again here when we're power trialing and the day one finishing aid would have made this garage finish a lot easier. I'll have a link for that down in the description. You guys can check that out. But usually we have some on hand, but we, we just used up everything we had and we don't have any right now. So it is, you know, because of experience and timing, it is, it is uh, closing up pretty good and starts smoothing out a little bit better. And then, uh, you know, I, I hit that a couple more times and it shined out. And in the meantime, the boys are down here. This is all burnt out. And they got it laid out with a ton of saw cuts. You know, trying to predict where it's going to crack off all those corners and everything. And the size of this thing is, you know, it's just a guessing dream pretty much. I mean, you know it's going to crack off those re-entrant corners in the foundation. Um, and then it's just a matter of, okay, let's just make sure we put in enough to hopefully control all the cracks. And that's that's our basic thinking when we when we start laying out cuts like this. And Luke's up there cutting the patio that we did. And then, you know, we're trying to keep the cuts somewhat sequential, with, but not making them too far apart. Now Darren's over here. We're using our crane. We got cranes on both our trucks. And that's exactly why we have them right there. <laughs> so we can lift them up out of a foundation like this and not have to carry them up around on, you know, rocky, rocky ground. But all in all, you know, the job went pretty good. It's like I said, it's about noontime right now. Everything's shined out. We got saw cuts and everything. And we're going to head home. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.